Now, having just heard from Baroness Smith, a, a prominent Labour voice since she was elected MP for Basildon back in 97, we'll go from the established to the newer voices, shall we say. I'm joined now by a potential future voice of Labour's front benches, because let me introduce you to Laura Pidcock, who's been the MP for North West Durham since the 2017 snap election, so a few months, but she's already been making some headlines for her opinions. Laura, who was recently called one of Jeremy Corbyn's rising stars, has said she could never be friends with a Tory because she sees them, and I quote, as the enemy. The MP, she is one of the youngest in the chamber, we'll get on to that as well, and some of her observations, I hope, went on to say her stance was visceral and that she had absolutely no intention of being friends with any of them, meaning the Conservatives. This is Laura's first interview since making those comments. Laura, thank you for joining me, coming on the programme. Good morning. Good morning. Now, any regrets? We've had a bit of time to reflect. We're back at school, so to speak, today, <laughs> Prime Minister's questions. I mean, I can't even believe this is a thing, to be honest, you know, that this is a talking point. I think the first lesson I learned is that not much happens in August. <laughs> All the politicians are on holiday and therefore... We had quite, quite a few Brexit position papers, yeah, but yeah, your story quite, seemed quite, to quite minor. Th yeah, it, it, it exploded for, for some reason. And I think what happened was a really important point was conflated essentially I was saying that I didn't have any intention of hanging around with conservative members of parliament in my social time and kind of having pints and jokes and things like that on, in the strangers bar um, not that I don't talk to Tory voters in my constituency, I represent them at, at with the same vigour, passion, impartiality, non-judgmental attitude as I would somebody who's a, a Labour voter. And, you know, you almost feel like saying, if I have to roll out, you know, my beloved auntie, you know, who's voted Conservative all of her life, then I will, to prove that I'm, you know, not dehumanising any of those people. So you do have an auntie that's voted Conservative Oh, yeah, of life. course. Oh, I well, no, I thought you were just coming up with a no, family no, member there. No, no, fictitious. <laughs> okay. no, no, she's so, called Aunt Sadie and right. she's an amazing woman. And so I you're love mates her. with Aunt Sadie. I love, I love her dearly. But the there is a, a, a very separate and serious point, isn't there, Emma, that it's, it's one thing to ask me to work in a professional manner. Of course I do, you know. I will look for any opportunity with Tory MPs to get things for my constituency. I'm ruthless about that. I've already reached out on, on, on issues in the constituency. I'm not getting very far, but I'll continue to persist. And it's another thing asking me to be part of that kind of cosy network of, of kind of after-work drinks with Conservative MPs. But there is a slight difference, isn't there, between saying, you know, listen, I'm here... As Labour MP, I've just become an MP and I'm working really hard with the Labour Party to get everybody a better deal. Yeah. And those people on the other side of the bench, we understand the distinction that you've just made, not yeah. people in your constituency, but let's of just talk about not. Conservative yeah. MPs. Yeah. They are the enemy. Yeah. I mean, the choice of language, I just wonder if any way you regret that, because so, the enemy yeah. is what a word that we reserve for all sorts of people, from mm -hmm. terrorists through to those people we're fighting in the Middle East. Yeah, I understand. And, and what actually happened with the with the story which happens I'm sure you'll know in in the, the the business of media as things spiral you know comment pieces write about things but and, those were the and, they, and they use language what I spoke about was that the conservatives are my ideological enemy now that is very different to saying you know Boris Johnson walking down the corridor I'll give him the elbow and I'll be really horrible to people no I'm extremely professional but there are clear ideological differences but do you think they'll want to deal with you in such a professional manner once you have have called them the enemy and I ask that yeah. in light of I sit and talk to a lot of MPs from all mm. sides of the chamber in this in this room especially on a Wednesday when I'm here in Westminster and very much on your side of the benches on the Labour benches mm. since the killing of Joe Cox mm. since Brexit since the referendum that the, the, dis the discussion and the tone of conversation has been about and to use Joe Cox's phrase from her maiden speech, we have more in mm. common. And I understand ideological enemy. You're not talking about going physically harm anyone. No. But ideological enemy is very much against that spirit. Well, why are we in different political parties then? <laughs> because because there is a reason that I signed up to Labour ideals, that I am part of the Labour movement. There is a reason Jacob Rees-Mogg is a hardline conservative. He is ideologically driven and, you know, let, let me be really clear about this, right? I represent one of the areas in the country with the highest numbers of suicides, right? I am, I am having people in my constituency surgeries who are suicidal, who are at breaking point. This isn't infrequent, this is regular. You know, I am 
even I thought I kind of knew a bit about the world in the first few weeks in this job. You worked in mental health. Yeah, that's right. In, in you your know, previous I have seen people um, suffering before, but never in my life have I been given access to, to, to the lens through which suffering is happening in this country. You know, some of the things that are happening, you know, universal credit that I am trying, and I've got a meeting with David Gork, the minister. I'm trying to get them to stop it being rolled out in December because there's a six-week wait. The Conservatives are happy to consign those people a destitution for that period. I can't... Well, they're, they're not here to defend themselves or respond well, to that, that, point, that, that that's that, your that, view that, of it, that is definitely, of Yeah, that's my, that is definitely my view. And I can't go then and be like, all oh, right, OK, you're happy to do that. You're happy with the rape clause. You're happy with, you know, 1.7 million being taken out of my schools and my constituency. You're happy with cuts to nearly 400 police officers. But should we go for a pint? And I'm really glad you raised this point, Emma, because... What seems to me to be odd is that I think I'm being the professional one. The question that to get things done, demo, you know, to get things done for your constituency, you've got to go and have like a cosy pint. With well, some people may say you make more progress. In fact, the Conservative MP but, Andrew Mitchell, who yeah. set up the all parliamentary yeah. group on Syria with Joe Cox, yeah. talked a lot to me on the programme after your comments. Yeah about how you do get stuff done. And when he was younger, I didn't mean this patronising, yeah, I can it tell you from his tone. Well, <laughs> all right, but when he was younger, he may have said some things along those lines, but he's had yeah. more experience in politics. I mean, listen, I'm 32, yeah. you're 30. Yeah. I don't like being judged by my age either. Yeah. But I do understand that even just five years ago, I may have had a different view of certain subjects. I'll say that about myself. I'm not going to say oh, it Oh, yeah, you. of course, we all change. But, 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 uh, do you, but do you ever do you think that you may achieve more by having more collegiate relationships? But what's happening here? and it's happening time and time again, is the conflation between, yes, I sit on all party parliamentary groups, I'm perfectly civil, I'm nice, I'm friendly, I, you know... I'm Are they still nice I'm, to you I'm, after you call well, them we, the Well, we've enemy? had one day back, let's say. Uh, w w but... The idea that to actually get things done, you've got to have these little private backroom conversations. You've got to go to the strangers' bar and kind of fraternise, and that is that not is a, a bar in the that, Commons. Yeah, we sorry, say. that is not like that's not a democratic process. And you know what? I want to win every single one of those people that voted Conservative in but my constituency. You could argue Jeremy Corbyn had to learn the art of compromise because a lot of his views weren't in how am the I Labour not, how Party am I not manifesto. But how am I, Emma, not compromising by saying that I? Don't don't really want to go for a pint with people who are inflicting so much harm on my community. You didn't quite say it like that, though. You did say well, the word enemy in, and that the, saying, the feeling was visceral. Yeah, in saying that somebody is an ideological enemy, I am symbolising the hurt and pain I feel for all of my constituents. Which, is your, which is your right to do? We defend that right yeah. for freedom of speech. So can I... And I, just, I was just, yeah, I was going to say, including those potential, some farmers who have told me they voted Conservative, I feel pain about what kind of security they'll have in terms of payments after 2022. So it's not just about those people, you know, who are um, the most socially excluded in society there that I'm arguing for. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. so let me ask you this. Um, Jeremy Corbyn has talked for a need of kinder politics. Mm -hmm. He has spoken a lot about the language that is used. He wants a sea change. He doesn't yeah. want to say nasty things about Theresa May or people on the opposite side of the bench. I just wondered, after your comments a few weeks ago, has he been in touch? Has anyone from the leadership office been in touch? <laughs> no, because I think he probably can't believe this is a talking point either because it is... Oh, no, I think he it, could believe it very well. It He's is, had many talking but, points, his veganism being one of them this yeah, week. No, but, I think he will not be surprised but, this but is a talking just, point. It, this is just, for me, right, it sums up why kind of the, 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 the kind of media outlets and I understand why it happened because it is a story isn't it I am challenging some of the conventions that go on in the Westminster bubble I am using the word enemy I'm not using the word enemy about a human being I am using the word enemy about an ideology and that is perfect well, those conservative women who you spoke about are human beings yeah of course and I said that they have been an enemy to lots of women because why are they less culpable than their male counterparts when domestic violence shelters are being shut when so, waspy so wait, women so just, are denied just to answer my question Jeremy Corbyn yeah. hasn't been in touch and no one from the leadership office has to say come on can you just rein it in a bit to be honest the what no to be honest there was some support because as you can imagine like you know you you got in touch lots of people got in touch it was kind of a, a bombardment and you kind of think oh okay how, how do i deal with this because in my eyes you know i as soon as i won that election i'm absolutely dedicated to every single one of those residents in that constituency and i 
genuinely feel that in my heart, whether so they're conservative or Labour. You, you don't and feel it's at odds what Corbyn has said about kinder politics and then calling conservative women enemies? Their ideology is the enemy. OK, I will walk their down ideology. Ask, yeah, I will walk... Ha, look... What is really frustrating, right? And I'll just I'll just make this point because I do think it's important, and I understand why people say it. People say, "Oh, like somebody said it to me when I, I had a little break with my partner." I, you know, you should all bash your heads together and get on with the job, and you know, try and work together on some of these big issues. And I can totally see why that is um, the the mantra, if you like, and why some people find it so frustrating that there's arguments, that there's conflict that, when there's such important issues. But if somebody has an ideological difference, I don't believe the private market should be involved in the provision of healthcare. For example, as an example, yeah. Yeah, as an example. somebody else very much thinks that competition and private enterprise in healthcare is. Why would I compromise? OK, very quickly, because I've got to go to the news. Time is <laughs> against me. Who's your favourite Tory apart from Aunt Sadie? <laughs> it's Aunt Sadie. No, no, no. You have to have an elected MP. Come on, who is he or she? Oh, why are you doing this to me? It, I, so, I, I, it's a great I, question. To, You've to, got to have an answer. To be honest, Emma, I don't really know many of their names and it's not because I don't care, just because we find out who they are by, you know, if we've got a job to do. So David Gork, I found that out because we're trying to stop Universal Credit. Right, I'll would, tell you who my least favourite is. Jacob Rees-Mogg. Who would you like to <laughs> say hello to? If you don't know them yet personally on the Tory benches. Like, I'll say hello to people if a professional reason arises. Right, David Gork and uh, not to Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> I think that's safe to say. Laura Pickott, thank, thank you very you much for so coming much. on the programme thank this morning. You. Good to meet you.